God is good, God is merciful. We serve a merciful, 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 loving God. God is a good God, people. God is a good God. Coming on that, coming on that, brother. God is so good. That's one thing about this part of my to John 3.16. To let you know how good God is. God, God is so good, He got you up this morning. God is so good, and here we move, we live and have our being. God is so good that He gave us breath in our body to breathe the breath of life. God is so good, He put food on our table, huh? God is so good, He put food on our back, huh? God is so good, guess what? He protects us every day, people. Look what's going on in other countries over there. Look what's going on over there in, um, in, uh, in Iran and, uh, and what's going on over there in Israel and, and, and the Queen and all in Russia. Look what's going on. But God is good to the United States. Hallelujah. God is good to us. God shows us His goodness every day to us, y'all. He's the one who gathered up this morning, huh? He's the one who starts us on our way, huh? Don't we say that? So God is good. Hallelujah. The Bible says this as well. It says, for God so loved the world. Huh? That's how good God is, because He loves you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. Huh? This is a personal, uh, this is personal. This is very, very personal, personal to you. For God so loved each one of you, each person. That guess what? He gave us His Son. For God so loved the world, He gave us His only begotten Son. God gave us His Son, Jesus Christ. God gave us Jesus. God gave us Jesus Christ. That's how good God is to you. God is so good, guess what? He was willing to come down. He was willing to come down in the body, in the form of man, so we can be able to relate with God through Jesus. So we can be able to relate, relate with God through, through Jesus Christ. Guess what? Nobody ever seen God, right? You can't even stand before a mighty God uh, if, 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 if you've seen God in His in, 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 in Spirit. You can't even stand, you can't even stand to approach God in His divine Spirit and His glory. But God was willing to come down in the form of a man. The Bible says, the Bible says this in John, in, 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 in John. The Word became flesh and dwelled among us. The Word of life. He's the Word of life. Jesus came to give us life. Jesus came to give us eternal life. Jesus not only that, Jesus came to give us life more abundant than life. God is so good. It was God who gave us such a life in you. It was God that, that, that you're walking around right now, able to get up in the morning to be able to breathe. The people to breathe, breathe the breath that God is breathing through man's nostrils. To be able to breathe, God said, man became a living soul. A living soul. It was only through God. So, the message is this. The message is this right here that I have right here. It says that God loves you and He wants you to experience His peace in life. God loves you so much. God wants to give you His peace. God want to give you peace in life. God want to give you peace in life. And look, apart from God, you don't have you don't have peace. Apart from God, you don't have life. Life, life, life don't really start until once, once you put your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ, and then that's when your life really begins to start in Jesus Christ. So the message is this: a lot of people don't have peace. A lot of people stay up all night long, worried, fearful, can't get no sleep at night, they got anxiety problems, you know, they got worries, all kinds of issues going on, but they don't have peace, and peace is in God. And God is going to give us true peace, true peace, and that peace is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's why the Bible says, for God's another the word that he gave us his only begotten son. Say, who ever believe in who? And who who's ever believe in who? Who ever believe in who? Who ever believe in him? Who ever believe in him to not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. Not only life when you go to heaven, but you have life right here. You have real true life right here with Jesus. 
Jesus. You have the peace of peace. You have joy in your soul. But you put your trust and your faith in Christ Jesus. Not in this world. Not in this world. You have never found peace in the world. You have never found peace in this life. You have never found peace. The only way you can find peace is only through Christ Jesus. You have never found peace in knowledge. You have never found peace in knowledge. The real knowledge. You have never. You know what the Bible says? Knowledge is going to increase. And people are going to be searching for more knowledge. More knowledge. More knowledge. But that knowledge is not going to give you peace. God say what? Man lack, man lack knowledge. Man lack knowledge. He said, my people should humble themselves and turn from their evil and wicked ways. Knowledge is found in Jesus Christ. All knowledge is found in Christ Jesus. Not in the world, not in the schools, not in the books, not in that. All is all in Jesus Christ that you'll find, that you'll find true knowledge. And the world is searching for so much knowledge. You got knowledge, knowledge and technology, cell phones, going on YouTube, going on Facebook, going on all these other things here to try to find knowledge. But true real knowledge is found in Christ Jesus. What you learn about Jesus, that knowledge is in the Bible, y'all. This is the word of God where you try we you find true knowledge. And then you'll have all the peace you want. You'll have all the joy. You have all the blessings. It's all coming to Jesus Christ. And what Christ has done for you on that cross. It's all what Christ Jesus done for you on that cross. He died and he paid a penalty for your sins. He gave up his life for your life. He sacrificed his life so you can live. He sacrificed his life so you can be free. Free from what? Free from sin. Free from sin, because you know what? Sin separates us from God, people. This is sin in our lives that separates us from God. That's why God don't hear us when we pray. That's why God don't hear us when we pray, because it's our sins who stand, who stands in the middle of between God, between you and God. But there was one man that came, guess what? Came to stand in the middle of it all. That was Jesus Christ. Remember the cross? Remember the cross? There was two Jesus on the cross, right? There was two men on the cross. Who was in the middle? Jesus was in the middle of their mess. And Jesus is in the middle of your mess. What? To bring you to God. So that you can have a relationship. So you can have a relationship with the Father. See, but God said he don't hear sinners. God said he don't hear a sinner man prayer. So when you go to God and pray, say, I pray, I pray, but I'm still doing all kinds of wickedness. I'm still sinning. I'm still doing all kinds of bad things. Even y'all children, even y'all young children, I know up at the age of 12 years old. When you're still out here sinning and you know right from wrong, God said, I don't hear a sinner man's prayer. But he hear a repentance prayer. He hear you when you repent and you turn from your sin and then now you got a relationship with God. You got a relationship with Him. He'll hear you. He'll be there for you. He'll help you. That's what we're lacking, people. We let our sins get, it, get, it, get, it, get between God. We let all our wickedness, all our sin, and all our filthiness get in the, get in the place of God. And God want to be first. But we put all those things first. This is what I'm going to read right here. It says, people choose to deny God. You know what? It's a bad thing to deny God. Knowing that He's the one who made you. Knowing that He's the one who created you. Knowing that He's the one who got you walking around up and down these streets. It's not you moving like that. That's not you doing that. That's not you getting up in the morning. And that's not you breathing and breath in your body. That's not you. You're not doing that. That's God doing that. That's God got you up every morning. Every morning you're able to move your hands, your feet. You're be able to breathe the breath of life out of your body. That's God doing that. That's had nothing to do with you. Because God can take it all away from you. Guess what? You'll be a dead man. You'll be as dead as dirt laying on the ground. If God takes this breath out of you. The Bible says in Him we move and we live and have our being. That's why you're living. It's all because of God. 
It's all because of the grace of God while you're here. But people choose to deny God. People say, I don't want to hear God. I don't want to know nothing about this God. I don't want to know nothing about Him. But He's your Creator. He's the one who knows you better than you know yourself. He's the one who knows you better than your mommy and your daddy. He knows everything you do in the dark. He knows your good and your bad. He knows everywhere you are. He knows every place you go. And guess what? Ain't nothing is hidden from the eyes of God Almighty. God is sovereign, though. He's sovereign. God is sovereign. He sees everywhere. He sees everything. He sees everything that you do in the dark. God knows about it. He knows about the wrong. He knows about the right. He knows about everything that you do. God knows about it. He got better. of it. He got his eyes on you. And then on that day, if you to be denied God, and then and, 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 and don't worry and and, uh, and, 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 and take yourself, one day you want to stand before God, you want to give account. You want to give account before about everything that you have done in the dark and even in the light. When you stand for God Almighty, you want to stand for God, you want to give account on the day of judgment day. Every human, every human being on this planet, one day is going to stand for a mighty God, and you want to give a count for the way you live your life here on this earth. And that's coming real soon, people. That's coming real soon. You're not going with your husband. You're not going with your children. Your children, no, no, no. You're not going with nobody. You want to stand before God on your own and give a count for the way you live your life on earth, and even how you reject God's son. On that day of judgment. And it's coming real soon, people. It's coming real soon. Jesus is coming real soon. And he's not coming to, he's not coming to be this nice little Jesus no more. He's not coming to be this nice little Jesus no more. He's coming with wrath and judgment. So God wants to get right with him. God wants to get right. He said, and say when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. If you hear Jesus' voice right now, don't harden your heart. Say, no, I don't want you, Jesus. I surrender to you. Jesus didn't come to the world. Jesus did not come to this world to go to that cross for nothing. Jesus didn't die and go to that cross for nothing. For nothing. He went to that cross for you. He paid the ultimate price for your sins on that cross called Calvary. He gave his life for you. He shed his blood for you because of your sinful acts and your sinful deeds. Jesus wanted to come down and go to the cross for you so that you could be free. Jesus died for you on the cross because of your sins. It's because why Jesus came. He came as the love of God. He came as the love of God. He came to take the sins of the world. He came because of your sins. That's why Jesus came. He came to die for you on the cross because we're sinners. We're sinners. The Bible says there's not one good, not even one. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. There's not one person to walk up this down in this street as a good person. You come and tell me you're a good person, I can show you that you're lying. You show me that you do, that you are a good person, I'll show you that you're a liar out your mouth. Because God said there's not one no, not one righteous, not even one. He said, all have sinned. All have sinned. But guess what? Jesus came to pay the price for your sin. He came to die for your wickedness. He was a man without sin. He came to be sin for you. To be beaten, to be whipped, to be scored, to be spit on, to be, to be what, 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 what? They said, they put, they put, they put 72 pounds on Jesus' head. 72 nails on his head. And they pressed it down. They pressed it down on his head with those little spikes. Those little spikes that you get. Those spikes. They pressed it down. That was your stress. That was your stress. That was the stress of life. That was your stress that you go through right now, every day. Jesus carried your stress. He guess what? He filled it. He filled the stress. He filled the pain. When they put them when they put them bones on his head and they pressed it down. And they pressed it down. He filled